is very seldom that a short story writer is able to make anything worthwhile out of an incident that actually happened. But this story is one of the rare exceptions. I myself met the Umbrella Man on a street in New York City. And I followed him, just as in this story. And I was delighted and amazed by what I found. I must confess to you that I tried the same experiment myself a few days later to see if it really worked. And it did. I only hope that on the next rainy day that comes along, we won't have thousands of you going out and doing the same thing. It would cause chaos in the land. So would you, uh, please? And say, Yes? Do you have such a thing as the list of the public houses in this town? The what? Public houses. Inns. Hosteries. Bars. Public houses. Pubs. A list. Of those in the centre of your charming little town. Yeah. A list. It's only this. That'll do nicely. Room eight. First floor. Thank you. Uh, was there something else, sir? Yes. A porter. A porter? <laughs> no porter. <laughs> I say, you don't happen to know the weather forecast, do you? The what? The weather. The weather. Tomorrow's weather. No idea. I don't care about the weather. I'm stuck in here all day. I hear you've had some heavy rains the past few days. I don't notice the weather. Yeah. Heavy. Very heavy. Come cloudy towards evening, but for the most part, the day will be dry and sunny. And that's the weather. No. 
15 minutes late. Again. Hmm. Hello, Arthur, Wendy, Andrew. You won't need that today, old man. What? Umbrella. Better safe than sorry. The forecast was dry and sunny. The weather we've been having. Can't be too careful. It's ridiculous. Beg your pardon? Mm. Drink some coffee, then. No, thanks. I'll just pass through to the buffet. I don't want to cut out things. Time today. I've got the hairdressers at 11, but I can be through by one. Damnation, I can't. I've got a business lunch. Oh, darling. Do you think? Does Arthur suspect? Of course not. He looks at me so strangely. Does Jennifer suspect? No. No, she's more interested in our cats than she is in me. Poor oh, darling. If only. Church. Thou what? Church. Place of worship. House of God. Temple. Chapel. Church. What denomination? Any denomination. Straight down the road. Turn right. I'm no good at crosswords. Have a look, you never know. Tricky. Want me to tell you? No, I'll go on struggling. The answer is mistrust. 
Oh, it's coming in. What train are you coming back on? I don't know, yeah. Oh, the 520. I thought you said the 520, Arthur. Oh, perhaps I I'll try to be on it, the 520. So sorry. Nearly forgot. Excuse me. Yes? Uh, I wonder if I could ask a small favor. It, it's only a, a very small favor. Well, what do you want? Well, as a matter of fact, I've got myself into a bit of a scrape. And um, I need some help. Not much, I assure you. It's almost nothing, in fact, but uh, I do need it. I haven't got you any money. You see, madam, old people like me often become terribly forgetful. Well, I'm sorry, but I don't give to beggars. <laughs> Madam, I assure you, I'm not a beggar. <laughs> Do I look like a beggar? I beg you to believe, madam, that I am not in the habit of stopping young ladies in the street and telling them my troubles. I should hope not. You see, um, I've never forgotten it before. You've never forgotten what before? My wallet. Please go away. Oh, but madam, I should call the police. Uh, allow me to explain. Do me the courtesy. You see, I left my wallet in my other jacket. Now, isn't that the silliest thing to do? I have told you, I am not going to give you any money. Why So not? there is no use asking me for money. Madam, I'm not asking for money. Good gracious. Heaven forbid I should ever do such a thing. Then what are you asking? Allow me to explain. Now, when I first saw you hurrying across the street, taking cover, I said to myself, what an attractive woman. Fresh from the hairdresser, no doubt. Smart, elegant, uh, with a kindly, not to say, considerate face. Uh, and yet... And yet what? Well, you'll forgive me saying this, I know, but I couldn't help feeling that you were possessed of a certain sadness. Sadness? I mean, I'm probably quite wrong. No, no. It's silly of me. No, no, go on. Well, I saw in your eyes a lost, faraway look that uh, hinted at pain. Uh, forgive an old man's impertinence, but you seem to me so terribly, terribly touching. Did I? Yes. And so I thought that you were the one person to approach because my dilemma might in turn be of some help, however small, to you. How do you mean? I wish to offer this umbrella of mine to protect you. Madam, I don't wish to encroach or pry on your private affairs, but if, as I suspect at this moment, you are suffering from some unrequited love, a longing, an ache, then I can think of nothing worse than to endure such suffering of the heart in the pouring rain. It is depressing. And all I ask in return is five pounds for my taxi for home. You are asking me for money. Madam, I am not without means. I, I think I told you. I left my wallet in the other jacket. Now, if I'm to get this weary old body home, 
I need the taxi fare. And all I can offer in return is my umbrella. And I believe I may be of some service to you as an added reward. If you had no money in the first place, well, how did you get here? Well, I walked. Every day, I go for a lovely long walk, and then I summon a taxi to take me home. I do it every day of the year, come rain or shine. Then why don't you walk goes. home now? I wish I could. I really wish I could. But I don't think I would make it on these silly old legs of mine. I, I've gone far too far already. It's, um, it's a lovely umbrella. Yes. It's, um, it's silk. I can see it is. Yes. Well, then why don't you take it, madam? I mean, it cost me over 20 pounds, and that was several years ago. But that's of no importance as long as I can get home. I don't think it's right that I should pay you five pounds for a silk umbrella that cost you over 20. Just take the taxi fare and be done with it. No, 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 no. I wouldn't dream it. I wouldn't dream of taking money. No. Take the umbrella, dear lady. Keep the rain off your beautiful hair and let your spirit be cheered just a little. Does it show so clearly? Just a look in your eyes. Just one more thing. Remember this. No man is worth the tears of a beautiful woman. Good day, man. So I was trying to find a taxi and getting soaked to the skin. I thought to myself, well, Andrew will be all right. Andrew brought his umbrella. It was stolen. Stolen? Yeah. While I was lunching in a pub, I got back to the office. Several of my colleagues had had their stolen too. Oh, I went round to the police station to report it. They had several complaints. Yeah. Damned odd. Damned annoying. <laughs> well, Wendy will be furious. Why? You had a hair down today. Probably looks like a drowned rat by now. Drowned rat indeed.
Don't worry, Arthur. I didn't buy a new one. No. A most extraordinary thing happened. A man, dear, kind, old man, asked me if I would buy his umbrella. Swine. I beg your pardon. You, you, your umbrella was stolen. You're a liar. Swine. What on earth are you talking about? I'm talking about you and Wendy. You met at lunchtime, didn't you? You gave her your umbrella. You met at lunchtime and then you invented some cock and bull story about theft and the police. God, I'm not a fool like being. You think I'm blind? Oh, I'll stop this at once. The secret looks and whispering to size. You met at lunchtime for God knows what reason and he gave you his umbrella. This is rubbish, nonsense, absolute madness. In the first place, that isn't my umbrella. In the second Don't place, lie to me. You can lie in court. Court? What do you mean, court? I'll name you as correspondent. For God's sake, you're behaving like a maniac. This umbrella was sold to me. I don't want to hear any more lies. Now you just listen to her. Shut up! I know you're in love with her. I am not in love with her. I'm a happily married man. A happily married man. But I am. I don't give a fig for you. You may not give a fig, but you gave her your umbrella. I can prove I didn't. This is absolute madness. Come with me now to the police station. Oh, nice try. I'm I demand you come to the police. You accuse I'm... me of treachery. You threaten me with divorce proceedings. I... Uh, you put my marriage and happiness in jeopardy. At least you can allow me to prove my innocence. Yeah. Umbrellas. Could be. Uh, we have pulled in a man. A well-known con merchant, known as the Major, the Commander, the Rural Dean, and even Chief Inspector. But I hadn't connected him with the umbrellas. An umbrella man. <laughs> He's come down in the world. Uh, we'd need you to identify him, madam. Well, of course you'll identify him. There's a great deal at stake. People's happiness depends on this, Inspector. We'll chummy in, will you? It better be the man. Otherwise, happiness won't be a word much used around these parts. <clears throat> well, madam, is this the man who sold you the umbrella? No, I've never seen him before. That's what I wanted to hear. Both be hearing from my solicitor in the morning. How could you, Wendy? This is the man, isn't it? How could you? How could you? No man is worth the tears of a beautiful woman. On your way then, are you, sir? Yes, um, off to Manchester, I think. Manchester? Always rains in Manchester. Yes. Yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs>